One of my favorite parts of graduation day at Heritage College and Seminary is the picture on the hill. After the ceremony, we stream out of the gym, the faculty leading the graduates, and we assemble here on this hill for one grand picture. Today, it's feeling a bit lonely out here. We're missing you. But even though we've had to postpone our graduation ceremony, we don't want to totally postpone our graduation celebration. Oh, we look forward to a bigger celebration in the future. But on this graduation day, we want to look back and remember. And I want to say to those of you who are graduates of 2020, I am really proud of you. And I'm really thankful for you. And I'm grateful for what God has done in your life during your time at Heritage College and Seminary. And I anticipate all God will do through you. So take a few moments with us today on this special day and hear some words of encouragement from some of our leaders and take a one more stroll through the campus as we celebrate your graduation on this day. Well, it's hard to believe that another academic year has come to an end at Heritage College and Seminary. If you're anything like me, you're probably thinking about what comes next. That's the way we tend to function. As soon as we finish one thing, we, we're ready to move on to the next thing. Well, I'd like to encourage you just to, to slow down a little and take some time to do three things. The first thing is this, think. Uh, give some thought to what you've learned this past year. What are some things that really shaped you or impacted your life? Maybe it was something you read in a textbook, maybe even a textbook on hermeneutics, you, you never know. Maybe it was something you heard in a class lecture or chapel service or conference session. How has God used these things to teach you, to mature you or to challenge you? How has God used other people in your life? Write down all these instances of God's goodness and faithfulness. That's number one. The second thing I want to ask you to do is this. Think. Once you've thought about God's goodness and faithfulness in your life over the past year, give Him the glory. Uh, the year didn't end as we planned. The future is looking a little bleak, a little uncertain at the moment anyway. And maybe the social distancing is really starting to get you down. Maybe your summer job isn't going to happen. It isn't going to come together. But we have so many reasons to give thanks. And you know as well as I do that thanksgiving is a great remedy for discouragement. The psalmist says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. So be sure to count your blessings and be sure to thank the Lord. The third thing I want to ask you to do is this, tell. Uh, once you've spent some time thinking about the past year and some time thanking the Lord for what He has done in your life, uh, be sure to share it with someone. Maybe it's mom or dad or grandpa, grandma, maybe a friend, maybe a spouse, maybe a pastor or another leader at your church. Make sure your thanksgiving flows into your conversations with those around you. Uh, seek to be an encouragement to others. Did you get those three? Think, thank, and tell. As staff and faculty at Heritage College and Seminary, we're certainly thankful. As we think about God's goodness and faithfulness this past year. And we want to tell you how grateful we are that you've been a part of it with us. And be assured that we're celebrating with you as this academic year comes to an end. And be assured that we are praying for you. We want to congratulate you on your finishing, completing this semester's courses and exams. We know that this has not been easy for you but we thank you for the effort that you have put in. Congratulations. But we also want to look forward to the future. And some of you are going into ministry, some internships. Some of you are graduating and therefore looking for ministry. And we want you to know that whatever you're doing, we will be praying for you here at Heritage. I'd like to uh, give you a verse that I think has been very helpful for me in these days and that is the verse from Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. Paul says, may the God of hope 
fill you with all peace and joy as you trust in him so that your hope will abound through the work of the Holy Spirit. The key word here is trusting in him. As we trust in him, then our peace and our joy will increase and as it increases our hope. In these days we need to hope and our hope is sure in Christ. You know, when I remember this year at Heritage College and Seminary, I will remember the pandemic that changed the end of the year in ways we could have never expected. But I will remember much more than that. I will remember you, the students. I will remember the ways that you sang your praises to God in chapel. I will remember the way you showed love for each other, the way you showed respect for your faculty, the way you showed care for your staff. I will remember the gospel passion that so many of you have to get the good news of Christ to our neighbors, to our community, to our world. I will remember the godly way you handled all the changes that happened at the end of the year. I will remember you. And I want to leave you something to remember. I'd like to leave you with the verses that were selected as kind of theme verses for our year at Heritage. They ring with relevance every day, but especially on a graduation day. Listen to them as I read. Romans chapter 12, verses 9, 10, and 11. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal, but be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. The charge we give to you as our grads is this. God has invested much in you, and now he wants to do much through you. Our prayer is that he will use your life in the years ahead for his glory to impact the world for Christ. We love you. We pray for you. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you.